I pushed the wrong button there. Hey folks, welcome back. <clears throat> it's been a while since I've done this. Uh, almost a month exactly, actually. Uh, I think the last time was sometime before I launched the early access version of the game. And then I was heads down for a couple weeks doing that, and then uh, bug fixing for a little bit, and then last week was election time in uh, the US, so that was an unproductive week. <clears throat> but here we are, back at it. And I've got lots of stuff to do. <clears throat> so welcome, and thanks for watching. Um, lots and lots of stuff to do. So my goal during early access I have, I have a couple goals. One is uh, obviously, you know, finish the game. Uh, I've got some big, big things I need to do there. Lots of smaller things I need to do. There's lots of bugs I need to fix. Mm. Excuse me. And. Well, that seems loud. Let me know if the music's too loud. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so there's some bugs. Some of these, I'm not sure, are actual bugs. Some of these, these are older bugs. These are newer bugs. Some of these I'm not sure I can fix. Like this one's a bug that I'm not sure I can fix because it might be just a feature of how the engine works. Hey, hey, Droopy. Um, but it's minor anyway, so it doesn't matter too much if I can fix it. Um, some of them I can fix, like this one. Some of them I'm not sure are actual bugs. I need to actually try to reproduce this. Uh, this one is an interesting one that I'm working on right now. Where, um, sometimes coins will, when you, when you destroy an enemy, will glitch into a wall. I'll show you. Uh, we may not be able to catch it, because it's kind of intermittent, but I'll show you exactly why it happens. If you go into a test level... Yeah, so here's a good test level. So if you look at this guy, you see the origin point of this scene is right here. And I do that because it, it makes it easier for me to place these things. Uh, see how it's, it snaps? And it knows to put it right there at its feet. Uh, the way I implemented that was I made that the origin. Delete that guy. <clears throat> um, so, <clears throat> that's fine, but when you blow it up, that's also where the explosions happen. The explosions all come from the origin, and the coins spawn out from that origin as well. You can see it... Well, maybe you won't be able to see it, because I actually think I've changed this guy. But when you blow them up, that explosion in the coins all come from the origin point, where they used to. And what would happen is, um, like right here at the origin, the coins would sometimes spawn in the wall, and then they would try to get out of the wall, because uh, that's how the physics works. It tries to separate everything. And some of the coins would fly out here, but sometimes one or two of the coins will just fly out to the other side and they're, they're impossible to get. Um, so it's a glitch, it's a bug. Um, and the way I'm thinking of handling that, the way I've started to fix it, is to create a node basically that doesn't do anything except, you see it right there? It just has an origin. And I'm calling it explosion point. And when I'm spawning explosions or uh, the coins, I just have them do it there. So I can, for each individual um, entity in the game, I can have a point defined where I want the explosion to 
you know, come out of instead of way down here at the origin. Mm. Yeah. And I can't move the origin at this point in the game because uh, it would change the position of everything and all the levels. That would be bad news. It's just not going to happen. And, you know, I'd have to rewrite the functionality for how things snap and all this other stuff anyway, so. It's just not going to happen. So I had this. Uh, I could use something like, you know, uh, use my position plus some vector, right? Something like that. I could. But um, anytime I change something in the scene, I would have to go back and make sure I change this math as well. And I don't know. It just seems a little fiddly. So I can just write this code once. And now if the explosion's not in the right spot, I can just move this note around. And I wrote a little note. I made it its own scene. I wrote a little note in the code just so I remember what it's for. This will just remind me later why I did this. Um, yeah. So that fixes the bug, too, conveniently. It, uh, it neatly fixes the bug because uh, now the explosions happen far away from the wall. The coins never get trapped. They never glitch through. It's perfect. So, the way I was finding those is this. Searching all the files for all these um, pick up spawn positions. And, and just uh, going through them, changing them one by one. There's not too many. Yeah, very, very few. I need to worry about it. This one's already been fixed. Here's my launcher. So I'll just load the launcher and we'll just go through and fix them one by one. Add my explosion point. Position it where I want it. What the heck is this thing? Oh. Let's do that. Uh, and then move this thing. Where do I want the explosion to happen? See, so here's this one. The origin is here. Uh, because this one kind of is intended to overlap the uh, terrain a little bit. So it looks like it's embedded in it. So I need to move this explosion point up, like here somewhere. Uh-huh. And then I can do... That. So it'll explode there. Yeah, that's fine. And a little that there and it'll do that there does this even do anything I don't think I use this anymore yeah chances zero it's disabled it's fine all right next drone hmm Drones I don't really need because they're never in the terrain. They're always um, outside of the terrain. So I don't think they need one. Yeah, I don't think they need one. I was thinking I could add one for completeness. But if I ever copy this enemy for another enemy type, it'll always be a flying enemy type. Good old clamshell. Right, the origin for this guy's right there. And I'll put 
put it like right there. do we got? We got clamshell, we got turret. I must have already done the turret. Yep, it's right there. Right. The blister. the explosion to come right out of the eye. Uh-huh. And the ship. What is this? Uh, I don't need that. That's fine. Yeah. This is the player's ship. It doesn't need one either because it's never inside the train. So a play test, see how that works. Let's play an actual level. Sure, let's do this one. So those guys, it doesn't really matter, right? They're not in the terrain, so. The explosion can happen at their origin and it's fine. To, or a good level to test this on because there's so many other enemy types that I changed but that aren't on this level. <laughs> Not at the beginning, anyway. <clears throat> there we go. So this should spawn... Yeah, I see that. You. Yeah, perfect. See so you now the coins glitched into the geometry there. I'm gonna do the next level and see if that one has better, <clears throat> a better, uh, better example. These guys you can't kill, so they don't matter. I made the explosion radius for the coins a little bit smaller. It's about, I want to say it's something like 30% smaller. Makes the coins a little bit easier to pick up. Which you don't really need to do. It's like an optional difficulty thing. If uh, you only need to get them if you want the S rank. If you don't want the S rank, you don't need to get any of them. Um, so it's just an optional way to have a difficulty without having to have a difficulty choice, right, for the player to choose. You can just choose your difficulty as you play. So 
many drones. <clears throat> if you guys didn't know, uh, one of my friends has been doing speed runs of this game. And he ran it, uh, I want to say last night? A couple nights ago? Um, Vimlark Plays. V-I-M... I'll put it in here. Vimlark Plays. On Twitch, go check it out. He, uh, <laughs> he spent so much time running it. It was, it was hilarious because he wanted to get a perfect S rank run as quickly as possible. He, he did it in 47 minutes in the end. Uh, but it took him about three hours because he, he would get to like level six or seven and, and feel like his run had been ruined and he'd start over. <laughs> oh, it looked so painful. He didn't look like he was having fun, but he said it was fun. Did you want more? Um, I'm going to, I need to start running this as well seeing if I can beat his time now that I have something to shoot for and I'm gonna try and beat his time he was playing mouse and keyboard I'm gonna try to beat it with gamepad I think it's doable Whoa. his run was not no deaths he died plenty. Um, I think it would be cool to try and do a no death S speed run. Just do the whole game on one life. Let me go to the main menu. There was one level in particular where I know that this was happening. This fuel, this fuel depot right here would glitch sometimes. And these coins would just fly through here. So let me see, I'm at 57. So if I blow this up, it should drop 10 and I'll pick up 10. 67, perfect. I'm just gonna do that again a couple of times. Make sure I didn't miss that. Make sure it wasn't a fluke. Ten? Ten. Alright, I think we killed this bug. That should make the speed running um, or going for an S rank a bit less frustrating because the game won't be cheating you anymore. is exploding. We should probably do those as well. Fuel station, generator, generator. Oh, that's the reactor core. I used to call it a generator and I I renamed it to reactor core in the game canon, in the lore, but not as not the game object. Uh-huh. That's 
fine. That's fine. Actually, all these explosions are fine. They can happen anywhere. Nothing important happens from those. It's just really the um, coin spawning that was the problem. And those have all been fixed. Except for the ones that don't matter. Right? Fixed, fixed, fixed. This one doesn't matter because it's a drone. Uh, fixed, fixed, fixed. Yeah. Time to commit. Fixed coin spawning into the walls. Ah, that's like a little nugget of um, dopamine going right in my brain. Let's just look at this one and see what what's happening here, and then we can see if um, if it's something I can fix or not. So in the editor, bring up my test level again. I've got a slider. Right? When I move off the screen it doesn't it doesn't hang on to it. Now it does this direction, but not that direction. Somehow I lose focus if I move off the... Hmm. I don't know, is this a bug or is this just an opinion? It's only really a problem because of the position of this handle, because it's right here next to the edge. If it was over here in the middle, you'd never have this problem, right? Or maybe if it wasn't a slider, you wouldn't have this problem either. What if it was just a um, plus minus button that you had to click? Yeah, right there, when your cursor goes outside the window, it, that, that would be frustrating there where it leaves the window. Why does that happen? I thought there was an option somewhere in here to like capture. Is that what it was called? I thought there was a something about capturing the mouse pointer. There it is. Finds it to the game window. That might be what I need. <clears throat> I wonder where I'm setting. Let me look and see where I'm setting the um, mouse mode. Because I know I'm setting it somewhere in here. Because I'm I'm replacing it with the uh, custom cursor. Uh, at some point. There it is. Yeah, I hide the, the mouse. Hmm. 
Mm. Here's the actual mouse pointer. So every frame, if the pointer is visible, I'm moving it to where the actual mouse is. But the mouse itself, the, the system mouse cursor is always hidden. Right, I'm showing this mouse cursor instead. If I just did this, let me just try this just for giggles and see what happens. pointers and yes yeah, so he won't leave the window now that will probably definitely take care of the problem right because I just can't leave the window now no matter how much I try but I have an ugly mouse so that's not really a solution Where am I keeping track? I think it's my pause scene. My pause scene gets a notification when something, when the window loses focus. I wonder if that's what's getting called. breakpoint right here just so I can see if that's what's getting just just to see if that's getting called when I oh I need to start this over again <clears throat> no it's not so just moving the cursor out of the window doesn't cause the window to lose focus losing the selection of the object the only thing that's selecting objects is in the editor oops uh, selected equals null is what would be happening This is what's happening.
Queer Select it gets called in a lot of places. <clears throat> Let's see if it's getting called here. So put a breakpoint. Uh, did I already activate the breakpoint? I did. Continue running the game. And drag in that. That's fine. And go outside of the window. Aha. Uh -huh. It is. So what's happening is. Ah. So select it as the object, and I'm moving the mouse, and I'm pressing the left click button. not dragging anything and it's not a poly handle those are the little vertices on the geometry object is null right yeah object is null so it clears it so <clears throat> this is this is intended for dragging objects in the editor Uh, let me remove that breakpoint. This is for intended for dragging objects in the editor like this. Not for this. Um, so what I think I need to do here is this is all... That was happening in unhandled input. So what I need to do is on this, on this type of control, I need to tell it you're handling the input so that it never gets here. Uh, so that's in prop editor handled except event uh, prevent bubble that's what I want to call I'm calling prevent bubble on signals this is this is a, just a bunch of hairy code for creating all that UI in the property inspector Yeah, see, I'm not doing it in for um, these sliders, and I should be. So whenever this input gets any GUI input at all, it's going to accept it so that any there's no unhandled input handlers will get the same input. It's a little complicated. A little complicated, but I think that one line will fix this problem. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, oh, I probably need to start this over because it needs to connect all the signals again. Um, yeah. All right. Nope, didn't take. Didn't take. Why didn't it take? already connected it. Oh, so I did. I already connected it. Hmm. I, th 
thought of this already. And I do it for all the inputs. So why is this one not... Why is this one still saying it's handled? Let me look up H slider. Maybe I need to do a different um, thing, thingy on there. What are the... What are the signals on an H slider? Changed. Value changed. It doesn't work the other way. As long as I stay in the window. Hmm. All right, maybe I'm, maybe there's another way to handle this. <clears throat> I could check if the cursor is still in the window. Because if I, right, if I go this way, I'm not picking stuff up, it's not unselecting it, it's only when I go out. So I'm holding down the mouse, I'm moving the mouse, I'm dragging this, but it's handling it, it's fine. It's not selecting anything out, else it's not deselecting this. But if I go outside the window, then suddenly it deselects things. Let me look at that again. I want to see what's calling this. How do we how do we land here? the stack trace went further so it's not a signal it's not a signal in the GUI input at all sure signals show up here in the stack trace. Uh, I'm just going to add an H slider right here real quick just so I can see um, what it's given me to work with. Changed. In fact, oh, maybe it's this. Maybe it's some kind of focus exited thing.
Is the focus exiting it though? It's got the focus because it's got this fat bar. Non focus has a thin bar. Focus, non focus, right? has the focus. I wonder what the mouse position is here. Maybe I can handle this by just saying if you're if you're doing some kind of mouse motion outside of the window, just ignore it. Edge case where the user has selected the object. Tried to start by moving the mouse cursor. So this handles the case where you're doing reselect an object, turn this off, and right, you're dragging it. That's the normal case. That handles the case where you select an object and then you go over here and try to drag it. Shouldn't work. Stop it right there and and then just see what the global mouse position is. <clears throat> Eight hundred seven ninety nine four twenty five seven ninety nine. That's weird. really weird should be something like 1920 799 again why position 427 is weird too Times two is sixteen hundred. Five eighty eight times two is it's weird. I can't I don't I don't understand these numbers.
mouse position. Equals. There it is. Do it there. Where's this one? Ah, this is the one I want. Let's just print that out and see what it prints. Try and figure out what this thing means. Okay, that's that corner, that corner, that corner. Minus 1120 by minus 490. Minus 1120 by 587. What is the center here? So that's pretty close to zero, zero right there. Which is weird enough, but that's okay. So that's minus 1120, and this is plus 798. Uh, 1120 plus 800 is 1920. Okay, it's starting to make more sense. And this is 588, and this is negative 490. 490. Yeah, I mean it's close to close enough to 1080, probably uh, 590, right? <clears throat> and it probably has something to do with the camera, where the camera is positioned, because you can do all this nonsense. There's zooming, um, so it's doing some translation here. Anyway, the bottom line is I can't tell when it goes out the window. From the mouse coordinates anyway, because they're they're locked, right? That's 850. Right? No matter how far I go over here, it's still it's 8, 844, 850. It just stops getting input after it leaves the mouse or leaves the screen. <clears throat> so that's not gonna help me. Um mouse. Warp mouse. That's interesting. I wonder if I can make the mouse warp around the screen. Time to Google. So keep mouse in window. Right, there's that, but I want it hidden. These guys don't know. Oh, this is an old version of Godot. Hey, 
Yeah, that's not really going to work. pattern someplace else. Yeah, I'm using it here. This is in my pause scene. So here in the editor, let's just try it. Let's just try it. Put some ugly code in here and see how it works. Left window, mouse entered window. Yeah, that works. <clears throat> so I can know when the mouse pointer's outside of the window. <sighs> it seems a little fiddly. Seems a little fiddly, doesn't it? Because if I have this, what am I going to do? Set a, set a variable that says if the mouse is in the window or not, and then in my unhandled input, um, I'm going to say if the mouse isn't in the window, then don't do any of this stuff. I mean, yeah, I guess could do that. It'd be nice to be able to, I could do something like this. All right, Godot, Godot does this thing where if you drag in here, it hides the cursor and then lets you just move it back and forth, right? Could use these spin boxes <clears throat> instead of sliders. It's a weird interaction though. People aren't going to understand that as well as a slider. And then these sliders, yeah see Godot does the same thing. It loses the input. You can go here all right, and it keeps it. I'm holding down the left mouse button. Right, keeps it, keeps it, keeps it kept it kept it but as soon as I leave the window it lets go of it it's just a Godot thing it's part of the engine <sighs> maybe I'm not gonna fix this one right now I theoretically could and I, I think I know what the problem is but I don't think I, I want to think about it some more because I don't want to introduce anything that's going to be really fiddly like this. Uh, 
um, if I don't have to. This can be used to detect when the cursor is in the window. Then you can have conditional logic for uh, clear selected. But I just don't know if I want to do that. some more. Alright, let's do something more fun. An option to turn off asteroids. Let's do that. That'll be quick and easy. <laughs> Famous last words. Options. Uh, what else do I need? I need my config class. And what else do I need? Uh, don't need any of this stuff. This guy. Um, yeah, I put it here. Not there. Not there. Here we go. <clears throat> So this will be a uh, button asteroids. And we'll say enable asteroids, right? By default, it'll be on. And we'll say, right, we need to wire it up. And we need to set a config, call it asteroids. Button asteroids, right? On or off, on or off. And I want to do it the same way I do this guy. So where am I setting that? I want to do this. Here, when the options are loaded, it loads in the configuration and um, sets the button appropriately. And then my config class. I need to add this asteroids option. I'll do that right here. And the default for the asteroids option is true. Um, otherwise, it's just going to load it, right? <clears throat> and the so this this sets the defaults and then loads all the options from the config file. This takes that option that got loaded and changes the button and then this when the button changes it changes the config setting then in my main scene where I actually create the asteroids right I say if not fig.get asteroids return. So asteroids won't get created if this is turned off. <clears throat> Let's see if it worked. So this is a new config setting. I'm playing it for the first time. When I go into options, it's on. Perfect. And if I go to the editor, and play, I should start seeing some asteroids. There they are. And if 
I go in here and turn them off, they won't all disappear. Not immediately. The ones that are still on the screen currently will stay. But as I fly away from them, it shouldn't create any new ones. And those ones that are off screen, they should have disappeared. Yeah. Because asteroids get disappeared when they go off screen. And I've got no asteroids. Okay, so asteroids can be on or off now. And if I go back in and turn back on. I don't need to call that enable asteroids. I can just say uh, asteroids. Right. If I turn them back on, they should start appearing again. And there. And if I turn them off and then quit, restart the game. The option should still be there. Off, right? And if I play, they should never appear because they've been off this whole time. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Bye bye, combat zone. I said it would be easy. Delivered. <clears throat> so the timer, so there's still an asteroid timer. The timer's still running. It still calls this function every whatever. But if this config is off, it's just not going to mat at add anymore. And I've got the default loading. And I've got the button wired up so it saves the new setting. Um, and I've got the default if you don't have the setting at all. It's on by default, which is the current behavior before the setting. All right, so um, added option to turn off asteroids. Boom. People can decide whether they like asteroids or not. Hmm. Oh, wait. I have two of them. I did the same thing twice. God, so much work to do. I think that's enough for tonight. <laughs> I'm going to ease myself back into this streaming thing. Um... I will, so here's the new schedule. Tuesday nights, Pacific time, 6 p.m. for an hour, two hours, something like that. Uh, and then Saturdays, noon, uh, for a few hours. Mm, yeah, so twice a week. Um, you know, follow, turn on your notification bell if you want to be notified that I'm doing this. And uh, I plan to keep this up until the game is launched. So, um, you know, if you bought the game, thank you very much. If you have any uh, suggestions, please let me know. Uh, and otherwise, I'm just going to keep working through this list until I uh, 
till I finish the thing. Um, at some point, we're going to transition to building the server and doing some network code for um, uploading campaigns, downloading campaigns, browsing campaigns, uh, creating logins, that sort of stuff, so that people can share levels with each other. Um, I'm thinking of using Nakama server for that, which is a, I mean, you can go look it up, N-A-K-A-M-A. -A. It's a open source um, server software for doing leaderboards and for doing... Um, uh, authentication, matchmaking, and data storage, like levels. Uh, I'm thinking of using that as the back end because I do want leaderboards as well. Um, and it gives me a lot of the stuff out of the box. So if, if it gives me everything I need server-wise, then I don't need to write the server. I can just use Nakama and then just write the client code in the game to um, interface with it, right? That might save me a lot of work. Uh, if Nakama isn't my jam, I'll try it first, but if it's not my jam, then I may need to write my own server, which is not a big deal, but it's just more work. Um, yeah, so that's it. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, please tell everybody you know about the game. And uh, I'll see you next time. See you Saturday at noon Pacific. Take it easy, everybody.